Not sure. Is the echo from this machine? I'm all set. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, it's only I who hear the echo, so it's fine. I, I think the really fabulous presentations. I really love the, the ontology group's presentations. It's just some, uh, awesome. And I think in part of I2B2, what's special about the I2B2 meeting is the live demos. And you really require a lot of courage to make live demos. And Nick, uh, that was just awesome you know, showing the last hour, uh, you know, doing all the coding live. Uh, so I've been like talking about this for a while. Uh, I want you to guess the title of the slide. Uh, it's I2B2 on Docker, zero to I2B2 in 60 watt. Days, seconds, how, how many say seconds? Okay, see second, I see one here, two, three, four, five, 60 seconds is possible. What about minutes? Okay, I think minutes, four here. Days, days, Sean is 60 days. What about years? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to attempt to show how to do that maybe in 60 seconds or you know here and let's see. Uh, but before I do that, I'll write, maybe do it in the last minute, right? It'll be really exciting to do it in the last minute. But I do have 15 minutes, right? Uh, Mark? Yeah, okay. Okay, fine, no problem. So this is really what you know I think I've been coming to this conference for several years. And first when I could install I2B2 sitting next to Mike, Sean said, why don't you try Docker? And this is the story of how we really went through, you know, first I tried to, the first publication was about really automating the install. Then we made the Docker, put it out there. And then I think recently we met this ETL plugin to really make it easy to pull in data, right? And the intent of this work is not as flashy, you know, as like all of you have done, it's mainly about making it very easy. So I used to, I think my previous presentations over here is why just, why just 200 institutions? Why not 10,000 institutions? Why isn't I to be to used everywhere. It's, there's such a need for it. So why it's not used? Because people are not aware. And secondly, even if they're aware, the experience of installing takes time, right? So the intent of this work is just to make it easy in an institution where there is no IT, great IT expertise, if we can lower the barrier, if they can install this on their laptop and install it in their environment, and they can load data in like the first hour, then more institutions would take it up. You know, it'll be more, it'll expand the community. And that's the intent. I'm thankful for, you know, uh, for, for the leadership for giving, for really pushing me to do this in a certain way and encouraging me to do it. And, you know, funding from Dell to, you know, make this happen. Uh, so a lot of this work has also been used in India, the intent of this work where over the last few years, we had a lot of interest and there are several institutions in India who want this process and all their feedback is really built into this tool about how to, you know, can you run just run two commands and have I2B2 running on your laptop? Okay. So this is the repository I'm talking about, GitHub, I2B2, I2B2 ETL Docker. And I probably, some of you might have used these containers which have been out there for several years. And this was the original paper, this is what you know, it does that when you install I2B2, it basically install these three components as separate containers and you're able to log in and, so how to go from nothing on your machine to this in 60 seconds was, was the goal. But even after that, we've gone, built more on top, right? It's just not about dating I2B2. How can we make it even easier to load data? So we added a few more components. You see the ETL tool, the ETL container here, which is kind of an API, which a Python API, which allows you to push data. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about that. This is a GitLab runner at GitLab. So GitLab runner and GitLab are really the, like the cron job where your code for, pull, you're pulling data into I2B2 from something upstream, right? So that transformation lives in GitLab and you have the runner process which is kind of making sure it wakes up and runs and the ETL happens seamlessly. Oh, and obviously we have, uh, you know, now integrated, and thanks to Patty for contributing to this, and I know that we have put the web client, uh, included a new web client now in the Docker containers, so you, it's accessible at this new link. So you have the old web client and the new web client. 
and the and the uh, the Venn diagram plugin is also there uh, right now, and it also runs Jeff's total num scripts, which were you know initially not working on the earlier images, so they are also running well. Okay, now before I go back, uh, let's assume you have I two B two running, and so you're an institution, a typical institution. Unlike the global north and the global south, you don't have a lot of IT people. They know SQL, right? They know how to deal with data, but they don't understand great, uh, a lot about security. They don't understand, uh, you know, what is this Docker thing, uh, you know, or uh, they, they can't program a lot. They don't understand ontologies. They don't know what are data structures. Okay, they just know, okay, they know Excel file. They know what's an Excel file. They know what's a CSV. So that's the entry level. If we can, if they can run I2B2 and make it available to their users, then this would be a success, right? So, okay, so how can we do that? So when you look at the I2 data model, basically there are all these complicated things, no, you know, uh, uh, this star schema, but health data everywhere boils down to two concepts, right? Data and metadata. So data is a big long file of who, when and what. And what is that when you define in a separate file, let's call it concepts, which has got you know, all the all the ontologies, whether it's ICD9, Snowball City, everything has got a path construct, right? There's a path that you go to get a code, and that code is explained. Okay, so if you can organize your data, if you can ETL your data and produce these two files, that's all you need to load data into I2B2. And you don't need to understand all the internals. Uh, you don't need to understand all the internals. So this is what the process which I'm referring to, is that you have got this schema on the left, proprietary EHR schema, and you write SQL statements which convert this into this simple who and what table, right? So you're denormalizing, you know, what's opposite of the principles of normalizing, you're denormalizing, and everybody, everybody can do that. It's very simple. But the advantage you get of denormalizing is that anybody can know, if you've got any new programmer joining your team, he doesn't have to spend like six months understanding the schemas. He can just look at these two tables and do a lot of, be very productive. Okay, and that's the beauty of I2B2, that it kind of can work on top of this. And that's really why I2B2 has been successful, because so many institutions, have, they have their own proprietary HR schema, and basically you're denormalizing data into this format. And that's why it can really operate on all, all those institutions with diverse uh, EHR schemas. And this is what the ETL tool is doing, basically. You don't need to spend your time understanding all these tables on the right, the internal I2B2 to to schemas. You just put your data in this simple concept and fact format, uh, this three column format, and that's how the ETL tooling works. Okay, that's an overview. So we spoke about Docker images, how they can help you install I2, uh, I2B2. And then we spoke about this ETL tool of how you can prepare your data in a simple way. And so let's try and do the 60 second demo in which you can install I2B2 and try and load, make an ontology right here and load, load your data. So I have just created this instance sitting over there like five minutes ago and I'm going to attempt to install I2B2 on it. You can see that some SSHing into into it. I'll go to our uh, repository. This is a repository. And notice that it says, okay, you the prerequisite that before you run this code, you need to have a Linux machine and preferably an Ubuntu machine. So you so let's do the prerequisite first before we get here, right? Because we oops. So uh, the link is broken. But I, I think it opens from here. Uh, prerequisites. Let me run it and then talk about it because it can take a while to complete. This is not counted in the 60 seconds, okay? This is the prerequisite, okay? So you don't count this. So this is a vanilla image, there is nothing on it. But we've made this code by which you can have Docker running. And this is Docker running in rootless mode, 
you know, the typical Docker you get are runs with higher privileges, and that's a problem. And because the users of it are not great with security, this is about installing. So all the containers also run in rootless mode. They don't run as root. That's an extra layer of security. That even if the containers get hacked, you're not going to get you know the hackers are not going to get access to the whole machine, right? So it's an extra layer of security. Uh, the containers are uh, are uh, are rootless. And so now Docker, this will make Docker ready to run in a rootless mode. And then we will just clone the I2B2 Docker repository. And when we clone it, it's going to pull all the Docker images. It's going to create, force you, it's going to create a default password, which only you can see. It's not going to be the demo, de you know, a demo user password. Uh, so we wanted to force people to change their password because we were finding okay, people using the default password and you don't want that to be running on production data. So it forces you, it automatically actually generates a password for you. Pretty much like Jupyter Notebook does. If you've started Jupyter, no Jupyter Notebook, they kind of tell you, okay, here is your password and you can use that to log in. Okay, so I think this is installed. Let me see. Okay, it's running. And now I'll try to run Okay, let's run this command. So let's count, start counting 60 seconds now. So this is the clone, it's clone the repository. You go into the, uh, because we support Postgres and SQL, let's go to Postgres, because that's kind of free. And then let's put the Docker images up, this one command. So it's creating a password and it's pushing that into the uh, Docker config, uh, into a Docker Compose construct. Okay, so that's it. You can see that the image is getting pulled from Amazon. And so the images get pulled. First one is because there's a dependency, right? So first the database needs to come up. Database comes up and then your Wildfly will come up because Wildfly depends, needs to, looks for a connection to the database. And then your web client will come up. Actually, the web client also comes up, but it's the first to come up because it's very fast. The Apache service starts up pretty fast. And the Docker, uh, the Postgres container takes a while to load up uh, because you know it has to start the indexing services and everything. But Wildfly keeps on pinging it for the you know for the uh, database to be up, and that takes a little bit of time. Uh, so if you've got a faster machine, it'll happen much faster. So this, I think. The web container is getting pulled, but in the background you have those containers starting. Okay, it's not being 60 seconds, a little bit more. Say that? Yeah. Actually, interestingly, this is a large Amazon instance. This even works on a medium instance. Yeah. Uh, so I typically do a medium instance. In fact, the demo instance, which is running up, it's it's a uh, it's a medium instance. It's it's running along. It's been running for a year now. So this is a large insta large instance. So maybe to Max Mike's point, it'll run a little bit faster because it has got more uh, compute power. Okay, let's give it a couple of seconds more. But no two commands and it is it should be you know ready for me. It's a five minute mark. Okay. So maybe this is a good time to ask questions. So I should not say 60 seconds, a little bit more time. But I think it's a good time to ask questions. And by and then we can uh, look at it when it's ready in a in a minute. Any thoughts, questions, suggestions? Yeah, Patty. Well, I've, I've been using this one and installing it in many different places, my laptop, our sandbox, AWS, and at NIH. Um, however, if you ever want to change anything, in it because it's all dockerized. It's not that you can go into the code and change something. So I have to ask you to change it. So is there some kind of mechanism? Yeah. So the Docker images are nothing but virtual machines. 
and you can etl you know and you can just you can say docker i2b2 etl and you'll go into the image and you can change the code you can copy whatever code you want so they're just like any it's just like having each of the containers is having a physical machine so you can do that and you can you know uh, publish your own container or take you know you can take a snapshot of your container and you can use it mm -hmm. but can we get like you, the docker you have your docker uh, image or manifest file and yeah the manifest file okay that's a good one so i think we'll we'll put that out the you know the the process of generating the docker make file right make file. yeah yeah that makes sense okay has anybody else used these containers before? Okay. okay, so let's see. I promised that we do this. And so I have to find out what is the password generated. So that's a new thing we, we did. Uh, so let's do an echo of the password. So we'll know what's the root password. There it is. So I go on to my machine. Oops. This is the IP. So putting in the public IP and they should be able to access it. Okay. Copy the password. There you go. So also we've added that functionality to change the logo. You can put your institution logo. It's configurable right now. You can just put the URL and the logo will change. Okay, and I promise that we have this ETL. If you've not seen this before, we have this ETL tool. Now when the programmers do it, they want some feedback if something is wrong in your concept or your fact fact file. So this is an interface by which you, it's more of for testing, right? Before you put your code into GitLab, more for testing that how you can upload your files here and you'll get a feedback. So right now let me delete. I don't, it's very scary. No one does like delete on my video data, but you can kind of press delete and all your data disappears. And you're able to then upload the you know the files which i mentioned you know the three column format file so I'll upload upload that file this is a concept file you know it's three columns mentioning what the concepts are and you know now this is creating the i2b2 ontology in the back end and you know there you see uh, you know you, you have two concepts over there and then you can also upload a fact file this is with all there on the paper you know that that we wrote so you upload the fact file. Now the fact file, this time it will check whether there's a concept ready, you know, so it's a validation. Normally we, we probably don't do the validation. So it is doing a validation and you'll get a log. If something is wrong, it'll say, okay, this line in your file, we don't know this concept or, you know, check that and so on. Uh, yep, so now you have that loaded and you can run a query. You see Jeff's counts are working. So you already see the number over here. That there's one patient which has got that, uh, you know, which has got that fact. Okay, that's all I had for today. If there are no more questions, I'll be time back.